Welcome everybody. This is Dr. Riley Williams from the Hospital for Special Surgery. I am the head team physician and medical director for the MLS's uh, marquee franchise in New York Red Bulls. I'm here today with our coach, Christopher Armas, and Florian Below, one of our uh, primary players. How are you guys doing? Good. Doing all right, Doc. Doing great. 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 Um, listen, we're obviously in a, in a funny time. Uh, my birthday was March 16th of last month, and for a birthday present, we got shut down because of this unfortunate uh, viral pandemic, which is uh, all anyone can kind of talk about. So we wanted to come online and, and just sort of get everybody up to speed on what we're doing to try to cope with these highly unusual circumstances. So, Coach, how have you been doing? How's the family, and how, how have you been making out? Yeah, d doing well. You know, it's it's um, trying to get the balance right of getting work done at home so that I can make sure that we come out of this with an edge, that we come out of this together, that we're tactically, you know, on the same page. So there's a lot of that going on um, for sure. But then there's family life, which, you know, I have a 15 and 18 year old, two, two boys at home. My wife is actually a nurse, so a little bit tough times for her going in here and there. But um really tried to take the positives from this um, with work, with connecting to people, with enjoying some time with family. Yeah, it's a forced thing. One of the, one of the hardest times I'm having is I realize like my life is, is very kinetic. You know, all of a sudden I went from, you know, I don't know, 15 to 16,000 steps a day to six. So it really kind of made, made my whole sense of how I felt and just my day to day sort of like energy was definitely altered. But I, I felt like after about three weeks in, I kind of settled into a nice rhythm. I have a 21 year old who's home from school. And I really looked at this month as a bit of a blessing that we were able to spend this much time together like she was 12, so. Cool. Florian. Yeah. So uh, Florian Velo, uh, my guy, uh, who unfortunately uh, had to visit the operating room here at Hospital for Special Surgery a couple of times because of some unfortunate ACL injuries. Uh, having said all that, uh, Florian, I have to say, has got to be a, a top five guy for me in terms of just effort and recovery and, and really looking forward to getting past this, this break to kind of see how you, how you're ready to go on the field, how you doing and just kind of bring us up to speed on kind of what your life is like now that you haven't been able to make it out to the pitch. Well, it's, yeah, it's different. It's a really difficult time. Uh, I live by myself, my dog. So it's just trying to get like the same rhythm that as if I was going to practice. So I have a, my, my routine every day, try to stay fit. Um, we usually have like a workouts every day. And then uh, sometimes we do have a video meetings with the coaches to talk about tactics and keep up to date and, and be able to uh, come back. And once we come back, we're ready to go again. Are you, are, are you uh, divvying up your workouts in any kind of particular style? Is it maybe a little technical kind of workout or strength and conditioning running? Kind of, specifically, what is a typical day for you like in, in this environment? Uh, it depends. I really enjoy running outside, even though it's, it's not the best. So usually I run with my mask on. Uh, if I go really early, I won't wear a mask and just go for like an hour, up to an hour, um, uh, run and sometimes I'm home, uh, do some uh, core workout, uh, strengthening with the team sometimes on, on Zoom uh, meetings and also try to get on the ball. Uh, even though like all those, uh, all the fields are closed around my, my place, I, I usually use my uh, parking garage to, to work on my technique. Uh, trying to be careful because it's kind of slippery. So sometimes I'm kind of scared for my knees, but, but I'm being careful and, and uh, I think it's important to uh, stay on the ball and work on your technique. Yeah, Chris, you know, the, the state of affairs right now really makes it really hard to plan. I can say that from a medical standpoint, the big issue I have is sort of trying to help them decide when we can kind of get beyond these individually based workouts is how do we keep the players safe? And one of the ways, even if we don't have a, a vaccine, is for testing. And, and the testing piece has been really, really difficult. So what's what's been your approach as sort of the the captain of the ship to try to keep your coaching staff and your and your players engaged when when listen I'm involved with a couple of couple of teams and you guys are together nonstop pretty much ten months of the year so how, how have you been able to try to mimic that connectivity? It's been an everyday thing, and that's kind of where we left off at the beginning of the year. That we we say that 
the way we work, the way we treat each other, the way we check in with each other, the way we have real conversations, it's an everyday thing. So it's a little challenging initially, but with Zoom calls, the WebEx, Microsoft Teams, with the coaching staff, with the players, it's been, again, we, we've trying to use common sense too. We want to make sure that when Flo Valo receives the email, hey, uh, Flo, we're going to do a, a video um, with you one-on-one -on -one and look at Xavi and Iniesta, that he gets excited for that. We don't want to bog down players like, oh, we got another meeting. So we think we've gotten a good balance of individual meetings. The players have their workouts. Um, we have unit meetings, meaning we might get 10 defenders on the phone call or a Zoom call at the same time. Then another day, the, the uh, attackers and, and then the goalkeepers was this morning. So, and then there's me and the staff. So proactive, creative. Guys, can we be proactive and creative? So we're analyzing our own footage. We're looking at best practices from Leipzig in, in Germany and Manchester United. We're analyzing five in the back. And we're just trying to make sure that we use the time that we don't always get to just get better. There's so much to learn, so much to look at, and then how can we apply it to who we are that we just take a step forward. And um, yeah, so it's, it's a, there's a lot going on. And then to be honest with you and everyone that would be listening, like it's so important to have the connection, just like we're doing right now. We can see each other. So Flo will tell you, Flo Valo will say, yeah, we've, we've gotten on the FaceTime. We've seen each other. Just seeing, hey, David Jensen, you just had a baby. How's everything? What do you need? Let us know. We'll help you out in every way. So, so much of what we've seen right now is our club is together. We're strong. And it's about the people. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, Flo, you mentioned uh, being alone. I, I, what, I, what I personally felt like, it was an awkward period for maybe the first couple of weeks when it started with the Zoom. Now, Chris just threw out a bunch of WebEx, uh, Microsoft Teams, words I had never used before. Uh, uh, like I said before, I, I, I work with a bunch of teams. The Red Bulls, just as a, as a club and a, and a unit, are probably – uh, objectively some of the more tighter knit uh, player coach dynamics that I've seen. I know it must be a challenge to try to maintain that. So Florian, you know, uh, uh, have you connected with other players uh, during your workouts? I mean, I'm, I find like I'm constantly holding my phone and kind of sharing my environments with everyone. So what, what kind of particular strategies have you done to sort of combat the kind of solo nature of your situation right now? Well, um, we usually do like twice a week we do like a group workout so we are on zoom even though we probably don't talk to each other during the workout uh i usually text my teammates and see how they're doing other than that like being alone is has, hasn't been that difficult because over the last two years this is kind of how i felt uh being separated and then having to deal with this kind of injury on my own um so i think that kind of prepared me for that thing and then the last two months kind of flew by because I was able to uh, have a good routine, being able to call my family and, and get in touch with my friends that I don't usually talk to. So it's been pretty interesting. And, uh, and I think, as uh, Chris mentioned, is there's always a time to learn. And I think over the last two years, even though I was not playing, watching the game, like I've learned so much more. And so I took this time to, uh, I'm watching videos on, on the side of like the group videos that we do, I'm watching videos, games, and then players that I really want to mimic and, and, and see how they're doing and have a mental image on, on the field when I come back, be able to just unconsciously just do it. I think for, for you, just to stick with you for a second, um, you know, tough injury having an ACL and then just by, by the fates having what they were, a fun, funky tackle and you hurt your other knee. For me, having watched you kind of recover from both of those injuries, I, I look at the last two months as a bit of a blessing because it, 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 everyone else is going to fall back a little bit and you kind of continue to move ahead. So any kind of time where you're not exposed, that's going to give us a little bit more time for you to get your body ready and, and to get your, your sort of coordination and just tactics and technical uh, feel back to like it was before injury is always going to be a big help. Um, on that note, um, I remember when you got hurt, man, you were on fire. So Chris, you have to be kind of excited about the prospect of getting this guy back into the lineup. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I close it. I hold it close to my heart 
will flow because I've seen him go through it and I've been with him along the way. But like he said, when you go through those injuries, it's a lonely time. As much as people are trying to check in with you, you have to get through it. And um, I've been through it. I've torn my ACL, you know, different knees you know, twice. So I understand that the road to recovery is difficult. But to see Flo uh, come back this year, we thought he was the man of preseason. Um, not only moving well and, and being part of all the sessions, but scoring goals, assisting. And, and what, a, what a joy for just someone to be part of just his journey, to see how much fun he's having. And this is always the, the goal for a coach. We want to win games. we got to develop players. But, but if we can help players become comfortable, and then just to be in the moment to now express themselves and to enjoy like they did when they were 10 years old. This is uh, maybe the greatest gift we can give a player. To, to, and, then he, and, then it, and then Flo gets the credit because right, he's bringing it to life. So, yeah, Doc, for me, it's been a joy to watch, really. No, really, really phenomenal attitude and, and work ethic. So, so let's switch gears a little bit. You know, um, the biggest question I get is like, Hey Doc, when do you think we'll be able to to get going again? And again, let's let's just like throw it out there and let's let's just assume that uh, uh, in the absence of fans, we're able to kind of create a scenario where the players are able to get back at it. Uh, Flo, I just just wondering, like, how much time do you think you would need to get ready if the word came down today that we could start playing at some point in the near future? I know what I think. I want to hear what you guys think. Uh, to me, I think we have like been um, keeping like workouts since we stopped playing, so since we stopped going to the facility. And I think based on the results and all the numbers that our um, athletic trainer got, it seems like everybody's still fit. Um, I think to be cautious and not risk any injuries for the players, I think we would need a good two to three weeks to get up to the pace and then go back to like full competition. Chris, you agree with that? What do you think? Yeah, I, I think uh, Flo's right. The guys have maintained a really good fitness level, but it's been a little bit scattered in terms of some guys are doing the virtual workouts at home. Some are going to parks. Some are running on concrete. And I, I would just based on the phases of which this needs to go, I'd love to see – a, a full week of minimally a full week of individual trainings, a full week of let's say or two of, of small group trainings, which then the testing comes into play. And then for me, I, I think it's minimum four weeks. So I think a six week on the grass phase one, two, and three, but four weeks of a of a real preseason again. Yeah, I think that 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 that's my big thing. I mean, every preseason. Uh, we already know we're going to get a hit with a smattering of like, you know, muscle strain, hamstring adductors, things like that, that occur when you kind of ramp up the, the eccentric muscle load that is naturally part of soccer uh, on, on a fast timeline. So but I think um, you, you hit it right on the head. There'll be varying degrees of, of, of fitness and, and sort of uh, readiness for play for each player. It's going to take some time to bring them in assess them, sort of see where they are. We, there's some certain things that we all know that we can test, you know, hamstring strength, for example, objectively, that will kind of give us some, you know, guidance as to how fast to advance guys. But I think you're right. Yeah, somewhere between four to six weeks we get going. But again, that will be predicated on testing, like that we have some reliable testing that uh, on a regular basis we can check players. You know, our players tend to be, fortunately, on the younger side and and as far as we can observe uh, in coordination with Dr. Mike Farber, who's uh, chief of our medical staff, um, he, he really feels like our players are in a, in a relatively low risk group of individuals. It really has more to do with asymptomatic disease transmission. So you really need to be on top of this thing with regard to COVID uh, moving forward whenever we decide to uh, resume games. So. Um, I don't have any, you know, real thoughts on when that may be. My hope is uh, we can have something in place that's uh, available and, and ready. I mean, there have been some, some numbers out there. I think I heard today that to even do a limited round robin tournament, it would take us, to, we need to have at least 15,000 tests. So 
you know, uh, given the, the status of the relative lack of tests around the country, it just remains to be seen when we're going to have enough uh, of those tests available to sort of kind of get back at it. Um, so, Chris, just to sort of change gears again, so, so you, you're pretty, you're pretty athletic guy, move around. What have you been doing at home to, to sort of uh, maintain your sanity and, and keep it moving? Yeah, it's, it's – um... That part's been been fun. To, you know, sometimes during the the year, it's I, I do try to for physical and mental strength and and uh, health. I always try to carve out some time. But during this time, it's been a little easier. So I'm not just having to rush through a few things. Um, but I would say, you know, one, I'm I'm trying to stay do something every day. Two, you know, I. I because where I live in Long Island, uh, sometimes to get on my road bike, there's so many cars, but the roads have been empty. So for me to go for 20, 25 miles has been a lot of fun. And with the bad knees, uh, you know, it's the biking, the non, the non weight bearing exercise is, is good for me. And, and I do a lot of good thinking on, on the, on my road bike when I, when I get out there. And then maybe the funnest part has been, I've been able to, you know, my, my kids, they're always playing basketball in the driveway and, yeah, they're now big enough where they're swatting my, my shots, but they still have some work to do to, before they can beat dad, you know. But it's been really cool to, to spend time with them and yeah. get the heart rate up even. I mean, this is the most fun. Are you cheating? <laughs> never. I don't cheat. I, I, never, I never cheat. I'm just not a cheater. Sorry, Flo. You can catch me with some other things. I just don't cheat, man. You and Tony are the worst. Never, ever cheat. I don't want to win this way. You know. <laughs> you know that. You know that. <laughs> Hello, uh, just talk to us. Uh, how has it been uh, for you outside of the frustration of being able to play, just being so far from home, given the kind of global nature of what we're going through right now? Uh, it's been it's been all right. I think uh, well, it's like well, technology nowadays you just can FaceTime whenever you want. My parents uh, always tells me if you need to talk, if you want to talk, just call us. We'll be there. Like, but if before the, the the pandemic i was just calling them two or three times a week already so it's just the same routine and and now i feel fun and i'm lucky to have my dog to uh to uh, to, to, keep, to keep me company yeah now the dog's important you know uh i always tell people there are a few things that are associated with uh, a long life believe it or not one is being married two is playing golf three is having a dog and four is exercising so it sounds like you got at least two of the two of the four going for you so far so Everything fine at home though. Family's the family's good. Yes. Uh, well, they were ahead in terms of um, the quarantine situation. It's been like two months now that have been kind of locked down with the limited movements. Uh, they are supposed to uh, slowly come out uh, May fifteenth, based on where you live. So based on the region, I think Paris is probably the worst place to live right now. So I think it will be a uh, a slow, um, a slow pace of people coming out, but they've been doing all right. They're working from home. My two brothers, my parents are living together, so it's been okay. They haven't killed each other yet. They have been good moments, so it's it's good. Honestly, it's good. Yeah, I've been. Uh, uh, you know, I work with the uh, FIFA Medical Centers of Excellence, and there's a lot of uh, uh, talk all around the world about how to kind of to restart. Uh, the, the league uh, uh, play, uh, most of that has centered around, like I said, testing, not to be the dead horse, but it also seems to center around them not being fans. So we, we, we just kind of everywhere, we're all kind of waiting for the same thing when, when we can get a kind of reliable test to sort of allow and facilitate play. So um, for myself, you know, someone asked me like, what am I, what am I doing? I, you know, I have to tell you, like, as I, as I continue to get older, I love to exercise, but I realize that, I feed off of the energy of people I'm around and it's, it, it's, it's gotten tougher to sort of kind of get motivated and, and, and kind of get the heart rate up. But it's one of those things that once you do it, you're so, you're so happy that you kind of, you know, got the heart rate up and it, it sort of frames the day. It's like the main thing for the day. Cause I don't have these operations to deal with that. So, <laughs> um, well, as we finish up, uh, from, from the both of you, you know, uh, what, any, any kind of parting thoughts about the, about your own sort of thoughts about this experience as it relates to just anything personal or to, or to the team, just sort of, Chris, we'll start with you. Any kind of uh, words for the fandom uh, out there in Red Bull land? Yeah, we, 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 
we hope that they're doing okay. Our supporters, our fans, um, we miss them. We, 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 work, we are working tirelessly that when we come back, we can just pick up where we left off. We're on four points and we're gonna, we're gonna keep this thing going. But to remind them that, hey, we have a really special group this year. We really believe it. That you know, the, the, the theme this year, and they would all know it, was togetherness. Flo Valo will tell you that. And, you know, togetherness, we, we're building that for tough times. So fittingly, seeing these players stick together, seeing the Red Bull organization take care of the people, um, you know, when they're saying, hey, let's not worry about budget, worry about the people, this is a big statement. And seeing assistant coaches drop off toilet paper somewhere for a player, like, you name it, the people have really stepped up. And I want to remind the supporters that we have something really special. And I feel really proud to be part of that. Um, so for everyone to, to hang in there, stick together, please stay safe and, and the best they can follow the mandates to, to social distance that we're going to come back. And, and for them, we're going to come back really strong. Um, and that, uh, to know that we're all preparing the best we can. Um, and we have a goal in mind. They, we all know it. We have, we, we want to bring the, the ultimate to, to, to them. So uh, we'll see them soon. Well said, Coach. Well said. Flo, any parting thoughts? Well, I think Chris summarized everything really well. I think um, we all know why we have to do because we know and hope that we'll come back and play and finish the season. In the meantime, I think the, the health of, uh, of the people is more important than, than playing right now. And so I hope everybody is staying safe. Um, practice social distancing and then and then yeah I think uh maybe I can talk from like for the whole group but like we've been like practicing and working out so like we are, are, are ready to go when the time comes and and yeah I think it's difficult time but I think it's gonna help us grow mentally um and it's gonna, probably gonna give us an edge like it, it gave me an edge when I, I came back from those two ACLs so we're looking forward to coming back, but right now just stay safe and then hope to see you guys soon. My, my thoughts are pretty, pretty succinct that uh, what, what this experience has sort of taught me is that this job is a, it's a vocation and, and we do it for the love of it. And uh, shocks me 0% that Chris's wife is a nurse because Chris is kind of a, a, a a frontline kind of guy. So the fact that he would, would, would be with a frontline kind of woman makes perfect sense to me. And, uh, you know, taking care of the team has been one of the, the more satisfying professional experiences of my life. It's, it's an affiliation with which I'm super proud. And, uh, you know, the signature and the logo is one thing, but it really comes down to the people and what I can say from top to bottom that uh, I respect you guys. I enjoy you. I look forward to when I can enjoy you helping us and helping us sort of like get back because the life without sports is really not great, right? <laughs> so anyway, um, hope you guys are all well out there and uh, look forward to the day we can all see each other again out on the pitch. Take care. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Doc.